us are in go mode all the time. We're constantly trying to take care of people, places and things, right? And the thing about being in go mode is our brain then adapts to this routine of go, go, go often. So when it's time to really relax and really unwind, it doesn't come as naturally to us because our brains are fixed to be in go mode. And so when we do want to wind down and relax, we go to these quick fixes, these bursts of joy that we think are serving us. And those bursts of joy might be comfort food, screens like our phones or the television, and maybe even sometimes alcohol. Now the thing about those things is they're nice in the short term and in short bursts of moderation. But when we then start to go to these fixes, these little bursts of what we believe is joy, then these unhealthy habits start to creep in. And also what we do know is even though these short bursts of joy may bring us pleasure in the short term, but alcohol, comfort food, and these screens actually help to sustain our stressors over a longer period of time. And in a lot of cases, the stress hormone cortisol is raised in our bodies and cortisol also contributes to more inflammation and a myriad of other health problems. So the question is, how do we break that cycle, right? How do we break that cycle of stress? How do we break that cycle of go mode and really dig deeper into the relaxation tools and techniques that we know can really serve us, um, really help to heal ourselves, really help to heal our mental wellness? Well, I have three techniques on what we all can do to jump further into joy. Uh, there is an author by the name of Ross Gay who has a book called The Book of Delights, which I absolutely love. It outlines all of these wonderful, marvelous things that bring him delight. And the moral of the book is that the very small to the very tall can really bring us joy. And so one of the first things that we can do as far as finding joy in our lives or adding some joy into our lives is observing and engaging in gratitude, a good gratitude practice. There is a study done by UC Berkeley on two groups of students, hundreds of students. The first group has written letters of gratitude to strangers. The second group did not write any letters at all or write, engage in any gratitude practice. Then they followed both of these groups over the period of six months. After the six month period, they noticed that the health and wellness of group A, which wrote the letters, improved over time. And group B actually either sustained or got worse. So in these hundreds of students that they looked at that engaged in gratitude, they noticed that the lasting effects of showing gratitude to others. And we know that engaging in gratitude releases oxytocin and serotonin with us within us that makes us feel really good and really cushy. And over time, that helps to repair our cells in our body. Another thing we can do to incorporate more joy into our lives is to synthesize happiness. Sounds crazy, right? Some of us kind of call it fake it till you make it. So to act like we're happy, acting like you're happy actually makes you happier. There's a study by Daniel Gilbert um, that was done on synthesizing joy. And he looked at groups of people who had to make a choice about something. So they had to make a choice between A or B. Whatever choice they made, made them feel happier about their choice. Even if scientifically that choice was not the better choice, they believed they made the better choice and felt happier. Now, that's a small microcosm of what happiness means as far as making up happiness on our own, but just try it out. If you look at a situation and you just decide, 
I'm gonna be happy about this. Or there is no situation. There is just this moment that you're happy. But making that choice to be happy makes you happy in general. So be happy today for no reason at all. My friends, I am happy to say that falling in love adds more joy to your life. And I'm talking about falling in love with absolutely any and every thing, from your cat, to a cup of cappuccino, to your friends, to your teachers, to your colleagues, fall in love with everyone. When you are in love, you are engaging on all of the feels that make you feel great. All of the oxytocin, all of the serotonin that helps to change your brain into seeing a rosy outlook, okay? So, and you've kind of heard of this before, like when you see people in love and you're like, oh my goodness, that person is in love because they think everything is wonderful. Yes, it is true. When you're in love, you tend to see other situations as um, hopeful, as good, as rosy. So it is important that if you're able to fall in love with just about anything, and we're not talking about just a romantic partner, which is great, but falling in love with anyone, anything, anybody helps you to feel good. Now, so the idea of cultivating the art of delight is a practice. It's something that we must intentionally do every day in order to feel that flourishing in order to feel fulfilled, in order to really feel happy. But it's something we must do every day. It helps us to be resilient, right? But I <laughs> so we want to be actionable. We want to be thoughtful and intentional about how we incorporate delight into our day, into our daily practice, and into our lives. So think about what you can incorporate today and what delights you, my friend. For more inspiration on delight, please check out Ross Gay's book, The Book of Delights. It is amazing and sweet. Thanks for watching this video. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Share your thoughts and experiences with the community. And remember, by subscribing and engaging with our channel, you're taking a positive step towards achieving your personal and professional goals. So join us in this journey of growth and success. We can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.